So I work as a critical care intensivist in a um, large volume surgical ICU. And um, I, I, I call this the two o'clock phenomenon as a 2 a.m. phenomenon. It happens again and again and again that you know between the hours of two to five in the morning, we get a call saying a patient has suddenly deteriorated on the regular floor. And our rapid response team responds to that call. They go to the bedside. Patient's either desaturating or has tachycardia for some reason, is tachypnic. And, you know, it's typically a post-surgical patient, post patient about three days in, after surgery. Um, they, they send him or her down to the ICU. And in the ICU, what that means for us is that a resident is at the bedside, a fellow's at the bedside, a, a ICU bed is utilized. Um, we, we mobilize all our resources. We, we do some very simple interventions, and within a couple of hours, the patient is as good as before. Now, what that really means is that this is a patient that did not have a true pulmonary problem. This is just some things that the patient was probably showing a pattern of problems maybe four to six to eight hours before that actual event happened on the floor. But because we were monitoring in snapshots of time, we weren't able to proactively intervene because we did not see that pattern of deterioration. Had we proactively intervened on the floor, that rapid response call would have never happened. That patient would have probably stayed a day less in the hospital that family would not have gone through all of that uncertainty of their loved one, who's usually been this older gentleman, 70, 75 years old, and family is also called to the bedside. Patient coming back to the ICU, going, to, going through that emotional trauma. We wouldn't have burnt all our resources, putting an ICU bed up for a relatively simple problem. So all put together, simple upstream interventions, proactively done, will save patients from coming to the ICU in the middle of the night.